Welcome into a Memorial Day edition of the Illini Inquirer podcast. Jeremy Warner, Joey Wagner. I'm a little more casual if you're watching on the YouTube page. Got my Ultimate Warrior shirt on. Just came in from the pool outside with the little kids. It's just a little inflatable uh, pool that we put out there, Joey. But uh, getting a little suntan, got the sunscreen on me. And uh, you're doing adult things during your Memorial Day weekend. I mean, if you call almost napping on the couch while I catch up on a week's worth of shows that I missed, uh, adulting, yes, I, I have thrown a quarter zip uh, jacket on, which I guess in this podcast constitutes as overdressed. Yes. Uh, I, I do, you know, we, we had a little event with some friends on, and they have a, some, some sort of possum issue in their backyard. So our teams, we, we kind of leaned into that. So I have a shirt of a possum and a raccoon driving a car, it says live fast, eat trash. So that, that'll be a fun one to debut. I should have debuted it here. It'll be a fun one. Maybe I'll debut it at like a media event or something just to see, just to see what lands there. We are, as Lon Tay would say, professionals. Uh, we like to think so. All right, Joey, this is going to be all about Illinois football recruiting, which they just landed another commitment. Zachary Amland, the three-star offensive lineman out of New Jersey, the Hun School, which has been a popular stop uh, and a, a popular school for Illinois, uh, as they've landed three players, one walk-on, uh, walk-on kicker, Will McManus, along with Amlin and uh Tight end Owen Anderson, who's a really good get over Michigan State in the last class. So we'll talk about him, but we also want to talk a lot about this huge recruiting month coming up. But Illinois, let's reset here to start off this podcast, Joey, with I am one on board. You now have four commitments in the class of 2022. Uh, or 2023, excuse me. I think you'd like to have more. I think they thought they might have more, but they are in a pretty good spot for a couple other prospects. Yet there are some concerns that are starting to accrue, especially with some targets deciding to go uh, to some other Big Ten classes. I think this is a solid foundation. I think you got to love having a four-star headliner in Caden Fagan, a running back who is considering Iowa, Notre Dame, have Miami offers, offers from a bunch of really, really good programs. Antoine Hayden is the kind of in-state guy you want to get in early on, close quickly, really good athlete out of East St. Louis. You start getting in there again. Uh, and then TJ McMillan, we talked about it last week. What a great get that is. In-state offensive lineman from the suburbs, top 20 prospect. Uh, it's great to see Illinois landing more of those. So that's a really good start in-state. And now you add uh, Amlin to it. Uh, great start in uh, on the offensive line in this class for Bart Miller, for Brett Bielma, to have McMillan and Amlin on board. So if you're for the positives, I, I think that's a solid start to the class. Um, maybe not the greatest start. They're currently, what, 10th, 11th in the Big Ten, around 50 uh, in the country. So it's not terrible, in my opinion, but also uh, there's some other things you probably want to add to it. So what, what's your thoughts? Yeah, I think Fagan, obviously, right, you, you do have the headliner. I know that's what people felt like they – they missed a little bit, not not in the building, but fans, you know, people who kind of look at this uh, maybe felt like that was missed a little bit. So you get him and Jeremy, there's a reason. And, and I know the, the context of it, and we've had this discussion a thousand times. There's a reason Brett Bielema kind of expressed some concern last season that got everyone all riled up about the offensive line because they needed bodies there. They needed long-term solutions. They needed in some cases, like short and medium term solutions, you see them do that. Now you get two offensive linemen in this class. There's probably, you know, Jeremy, you would think maybe one more, uh, maybe two if, if the situation was right, but one really makes sense. Uh, so, so you start to address that. And two of the four, this feels very Bielma, right? Two of the four early on are, are offensive linemen. Of course, the other ones are running back. That's super Bielema uh, going on there. But you, you like to start. I think, you know, with uh, coming up to a huge first weekend here of official visits. So I, I think you would, uh, maybe me would, would like to see them have one more going into that, where you can kind of have, if all four of those guys are on campus, you can have those four do a little bit like they did last year and kind of, kind of swarm the non-committed and really – have pitches coming from from coaches, from parents, from and maybe bring Sean Miller's mom up if you can do that. She she's an outstanding recruiter, but really you, you want it to kind of come from everywhere on those non-recruited guys. And you know, four is still a fine number, but if you can get five, 
you know, is there time, I guess, between now and Friday to get one more? You, you would think there could be, but that, that you know, that it's a good foundation. It's exactly right. Yeah, 11th in the Big Ten currently, and these rankings don't mean much, especially with the transfer portal and all of that. But it's, it's a decent guide of, of where you are compared to other programs right now. Uh, 44th in the country. I, I've i said it. My expectations for Brett Bielma coming in here and recruiting weren't um, maybe to what Shiano has done at Rutgers. And, and I know some Illinois fans say, why can't we have that? I just I looked at Bielma's history in the Big Ten, and a lot of his Wisconsin classes, even when they were winning, were 30 through 50. And then he develops those guys extremely well. And it's a developmental program where those guys make a bigger impact. That's just been his model. So I, I first class, second class, kind of on, on par for what I thought. And, and to get a four-star early on in Caden Fagan, I still think is, is really, really big. Now, you're probably not there's probably not a ton of buzz outside the hardcore Illinois football fan though, because you don't have that other maybe headliner quite yet. Right. Like I think that's what this month is going to be really important. Can you land Malik Elsey, the four-star wide receiver out of Chicago, Simeon, you've done a great job recruiting. Can you close on Jair Hill, four-star defensive back out of Kent Key, who's now one of the top prospects in the Midwest when you got Oklahoma and Oregon offering recently. Michigan wants them really bad. Uh, Cincinnati, Missouri, a, a lot of those programs. Minnesota really, really wants Jair Hill. Just a, a great prospect. So is Elzey. If you can add one of those, no matter who else they add, Joey, in this month, I think you're feeling great uh, about where Illinois stands because you're elevating, you're raising the bar when last year you didn't have a four-star prospect. So I thought the next step on their in-state, they're starting to take. They got three of the top 20 prospects in the state. There's also misses. And I think we're also finding out over the last couple months, hey, Illinois has got to win some more games to make it easier to land some of the top 10 prospects. But they've done a great job of getting in with Malik Elzey, with Jair Hill. Can you close? Can he close? I, I thought the biggest concern of the last month was you did a heck of a job recruiting Roderick Pearson. We'll get to defensive line recruiting, but Wisconsin comes in with a late offer and Illinois just couldn't close. And then all of a sudden, I can't blame Roderick Pierce, a defender at Wisconsin playing for Jim Leonard, a program that's d developed so many great defensive linemen, so many great defenders. I can't blame Roderick Pierce, but that's still the hurdle when you go five and seven instead of maybe seven and five uh, uh, for Illinois football is getting over that hump with some of those guys. They're able to do it with Fagan. They're able to do it with McMillan. We'll see if they can do it with a couple more of those instators this month. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of us kind of recognize this wasn't going to happen overnight. Uh, you still are battling for most of these kids lives. Illinois football has had what is it, 17 years old two or three good years in total maybe i'm missing or someone's going to tell me i'm missing some that's fine the point being not not sustained success which is what brett's talked a lot about getting to but also just not a lot of even action the pan successes and you have to recruit against that a little bit and you're seeing that there's still an uphill you know, battle a little bit in some of that and you get it if you're the kids, right? You you understand exactly what you said about Roderick Pierce and, and that decision, and some of these other, uh, you know, Northwestern has a pretty good pitch still. I, I maybe that's not the most popular thing to say uh, to a bunch how, of Hawaiian I fans. How dare you? Um, yeah, because yes, Northwestern's had two bad years the last three years, right? Pat Fitzgerald has a much better track record. And, oh, two of the last four years, they've won the Big Ten West Championship, played in the Big Ten Championship game. Now, not all that competitive. One of them, I think they were. Um, but anyway, I'll look that up. But Pat Fitzgerald also is developing a lot of draft picks. It's a great academic sell. I know Illinois is too, but Northwestern has a good sell. Minnesota has had a good sell here recently. Illinois has got to continue to, to up their sell by, by winning on the field. I think Bielma and his staff have done a great job developing relationships, Joey, uh, of having some success to sell uh, in their past histories. And, and now, you know, I think on defense, you got them some things to sell. Uh, offensively, I think you have something to sell to offensive linemen and running backs, um, but you got you to win games. You got to develop a lot of draft picks. And, you know, fifth, sixth, seventh round guys might not appeal as much as, you know, the Kirby Josephs of the world. I think you got to get more of those guys in the program. Yeah, Jeremy, it takes time. I mean, 
You saw the the step forward they had in year one under Brett Bielma, and and you saw that in the recruiting trail too. Obviously, I mean, the, you can some the rankings weren't you know outrageously higher than they had been previously, but you felt like you saw them win some battles and really, really kind of establish a little bit of a foothold in the state and, and find out who they are. Brett Bielma said something really interesting to me last week. Uh, was it last week? Yeah, last week. That you know they. He's proud of what they've done in the state because they said they were going to do it and they backed it up. And he said, you know, you can almost feel like they're, they're making headway because now it's if you're late, it's well, where where have you guys been? Where like this, so the expectation exists that they'll be there, and I think that matters. And you you get a lot of good graces in, in the football coaching community, and it's a pretty tight community, even though there's 250 or, or whatever the case may be schools in the state. It's a tight knit community, man. They, they for high school football coaches, outside of some crazy, stupid rivalries over a game like 20 years ago, I'll, I'll talk, man. They all get along with each other. Like the, the word spreads fast. And, and to your point about creating buzz, like, yeah, you, you're right. Maybe this isn't like nationally, this huge, you know, four commits hasn't really turned any heads nationally. But are you creating buzz in recruiting departments across the Big Ten? You know what I mean? Like, are, are you kind of pointing out that, hey, not you might lose, but not going to get walked all over? And maybe that's not the case. But I think you're starting to get a little bit closer to that. I certainly think Iowa has felt Illinois. I think Minnesota has felt Illinois. I think those schools came into this state last, you know, under Lovey Smith and found it easier to, to get recruits. So they kept doing it. Um, I think Illinois is feeling Wisconsin right now right like you can tell that illinois is feeling northwestern right now like those schools are, are getting better of illinois at least for some prospects here and you're right joey like they don't offer damon walters until like early spring you're like wait what's going on or tj mcmillan they didn't offer until later in the process now one of those went your way still the other one didn't but it is different that now you're like oh illinois not involved what's going on there are they slacking now and it's no, they got their process too. And uh, it worked with McMillan. Uh, it didn't with Walters. Let's talk a little bit about Zachary Amlin. Uh, I, I think a really good get 10 other power five offers, six, six, 285 pounds. You turn on his film, Joey. And I, I think the first thing that stands out, he plays left guard um, at least this year for the hunt school. I just talked with his coach, Todd Smith, who's you know, obviously developed some really good players at the Hunt School. They had a kid who's a four-star, Jacob Allen, that's going to Rutgers. Um, he played tackle last year, so that's why Amlin was on at left guard. He's going to play tackle this next year. But the first thing that stands out to me is his quickness off the ball. Um, at 6'6", 285, he moves extremely well. He's a lean 285 right now, so he's got the chance to add, I, I think, even more strength to him. Uh, but then this past year, his coach told me, he kind of challenged him to be a lot more physical and he's got a seven minute highlight video of just pancake blocks. Now, some of those guys, of course, undersized high school kids, but he added that physicality to his game. I think he's one of those players, you know, you've talked about it a lot, the versatility. I think he can play either tackle or guard at the next level. So you get him in your program, you develop him, And then I think in a couple of years, he can be a really good prospect. And I thought um, Orion Easterling made a really good comp, um, at least to a high school prospect. He has a lot of similarities to Alex Pauczewski as a high school prospect. Some things, maybe some some rawness in certain areas, pass pro, um, needs to add some strength. But at that, that frame, the way he moves, the way he finishes blocks, uh, kind of has some Pauczewski to him. Yeah, that's, that's a good comp. And if it's one that plays out similarly to Alex Pauczewski, I mean, that's a huge, that's a good, good win. It's a good. Alex belcheski has been good to Illinois for a lot of years, man. Like, got a chance to play in the NFL. Those... Like I, I think when healthy, I thought two, three years ago, I thought he was the best offensive line prospect on the on the line. Yeah, that's I mean, that's a good, good comp. And, and look, you gotta understand too, there's always gonna be some, I mean, always rawness with every high school kid, but especially when you're you're I mean, you're not getting the five stars have less rawness, right? I mean, you know, and that, that's Brett Bielma believes and Bart Miller believes in their ability to coach. And now you look at the guys who who can play a little bit more of that tackle. You know, may, maybe that's your know, last year felt like they loaded up and they, they really did a nice job getting some interior help. I know Hunter Whitenecks probably got some versatility and obviously uh 
big big mag mag mountain nice. excuse me it, big mountain smaller it looks like a tackle to everybody with eyes so i mean that you start getting a little bit more of that outside jeremy and and that's the big deal and and again they're hitting what was when brett bielma walked in the door probably their thinnest position group in terms of long-term help and and now you've seen you know they got five right five high school prospects in 22 two juco's they've got a, a grad transfer and dylan davis they've not discussed been able to discuss yet and now you see them getting two more like that is a makeover that, that is a makeover of an offensive line room and you know of course they're not going to be ready speaking of alex palcheski probably wasn't ready to play as a 17 18 year old in the big 270 275 pound guard as a 17 18 year old you shouldn't be ready at that stage, right? So, but the long termness is there, and obviously, long term, he's been good, and he, they needed to add there, and you're seeing them do that. And they, they're getting in. Shout out to Andy Boo, man. Yeah. Andy Boo is—is is he like the mayor of some East Coast city that we're unfamiliar with? This, this dude is really, really doing a nice job out east. So you know, I, I asked some people about him. Uh, I never did the story on him. I got some good stuff, but I kind of wanted a little bit more. But uh, I talked with with Todd Smith about him, and, and Andy said he's been recruiting New Jersey since he was at Kentucky, and then obviously goes to Rutgers, Maryland, and develops relationships there. So uh, he's got good relationship, and he gets them in. Like that's your job as a regional recruiter is to get in. Have him in there. He's done that. And then you let the position coach kind of take over the recruitment. And Bart Miller has turned out to be a pretty dang good recruiter. And Brett Bielema has a history that, you know, Todd Smith told me, he goes, when you think big offensive linemen, you think the Big Ten. And Brett Bielema's got a pretty dang good history of doing that. And, and it continues at Illinois with Darian Lowe and Doug Kramer having a, a good impact on them. I think those were good prospects regardless. But I, I think being under Brett Bielema certainly helped them this past year. Um, so yeah, I, I think Andy Boo's done a great job of finding an area that Illinois can supplement their in-state and regional efforts, right? Like your home has to be Illinois. And you talked with the coaches this past, we've talked to them. They want to get more into Wisconsin and Minnesota. They want to get more into Ohio, Indiana. They're getting into Michigan a little bit now. And they want to get back into St. Louis and probably do a better job there. And I think Ryan Walters and Corey Patterson certainly are going to be key factors there. But that's that's their footprint, right? Like even Brett Bioma, you know, Lovey Smith, Tim Beckman, Ron Zook, whoever is the coach, always talks about that that radius around Champaign. But you got to have your other areas. And Illinois continues to do well in Florida, just like Lovey Smith did. And this staff was going to go to Florida. Aaron Henry's going to get DBs out of there, but to have another place that say you don't get Chris Tarek, you know, the number 20 prospect in state, that's an offensive lineman in the suburbs. Can you go somewhere else and get somebody? And I think Zachary Amlin uh, is, is a similar type prospect and it's great to be able to have that and go there and, and be able to supplement your regional efforts. Yeah. It's somewhere you feel comfortable, comfortable knowing that you, you have trust. I mean, ultimately, recruiting is trust and relationships, right? And if you've, if you've got coaches, players who can kind of back up what you say uh, with ties to a place that, I mean, dude, this isn't just like, oh, they've got a couple. I mean, it's not been like a 10 guys from the Hunt School, but it is pretty, <laughs> I mean, like there's enough there where you're like, okay, there's there's a trust of Andy Boo, of Brett Bielma, of Bart Miller, of this coaching staff inside the walls of that school and just because it's not in the state of illinois doesn't mean it's any less beneficial to you it's still a beneficial place and to know that they believe in what you're selling and how you're going to take care of the guys that goes a long way yeah you've now added six players from new jersey so you got the jersey boys thing going here and three quarterbacks right like almost all the scholarship quarterbacks are going to be from new jersey with tommy devito art sikowski uh, and donovan leary so i think it's a good thing jersey has good football uh they, they have really good football in that state and obviously Rutgers has done well there under shiano but if you can steal a couple of those guys i think that's a that's a really good thing all right we'll talk a little bit about the official visits here coming up joey but Let's talk about some of the concerns. I, I think quarterback is one of those because Illinois gets a late start after another offensive coordinator change. Who are they going to get a quarterback? I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know who that top target is going to be. Are they going to be able to add a quarterback or are they going to look towards the transfer portal? And number two is 
I'm very concerned about defensive line recruiting. And, and this is now a third year. I'm very concerned about defensive line recruiting because two years ago, they signed Sidarius McConnell in that weird limbo class. And, and I think he can be a, a rotation player maybe this year, but more likely in the future. Uh, last year, you got two commitments from defensive linemen. You lost both of them. Terrell Jones ends up at Virginia. Brian Allen ends up at Iowa. And you don't sign any defensive linemen. Now, you've added transfers, including T-Rod Edwards, who's got four years of, of eligibility left. But that's, that's an area they have not been recruiting very well. And now Tyler Gant goes to Northwestern. Roderick Pierce uh, goes to Wisconsin. You know, Dante Barone just got a Rutgers offer. And, and I think that in-state offer, he's from the Hun School as well. I think that, that, that could be dangerous for Illinois. And then Jamel Howard, Jamal Howard out of uh, Chicago Marist. Marist has been tough for Illinois to crack, but Wisconsin has made a huge impression on him as well. And I, I think Wisconsin's definitely the leader because they have an official visit. Illinois has not gotten that official visit date set up quite yet. So um, that's an area I, I'm really, really concerned about because, yes, you can go to the transfer portal at some point, but you want to win these recruitments, Joey. And, you know, not being able to land these is starting to become a trend. Yeah, it is. And I've always, and I've been meaning to ask Brett Bielma about this, uh, but I always feel like defensive line and quarterback, and this is just, this might sound like an excuse, and I sure don't mean for it to be, but those are hard positions to recruit to. Well, you see it, Jeremy, I mean, D lineman, a defensive lineman starts to blow up, and like they blow up fast because there's just not a lot of really good, really productive. Go for it. Jamarian Harkless. Illinois offers, and all of a sudden, Georgia, LSU, Auburn, Michigan all offer. Now, he's a great prospect. I don't know how he went under the, the radar that long, but that was a great job by Illinois finding him. They're supposed to get an official visit, but it's probably going to be pretty tough to get him. Yeah, that's, that's some competition. And it's just, it's a very, it feels, and I, I need to do more research. It's a summer project, Jeremy, but like it just feels like a really difficult position. To, to recruit period and, and Illinois has struggled with it and I'm not trying to let him off the hook for it because you were and you did a good job with, with Roderick Pierce and you, you didn't get him and you, you've done good jobs in, in other spots and and you didn't get them and that, those are tough losses I mean just point blank it's it's tough when you are now in May uh, coming into your official visit weekend of your second year and, and you don't have one high school defensive lineman you've signed that's tough man i mean that you've had you know brian allen was committed decommitted they've had a one uh, i've drawn a blank on the other well, uh, yeah but you got to get them signed man you got to close on some of these yeah and, and the noah matthews one kind of stunk for them because this year it wouldn't have been an issue because you had to right. try to blue shirt him get him for an official visit illinois offered this kid out of delaware looks great under the radar uh and then kentucky swoops in they didn't have to blue shirt him had official visit uh and were able to, to steal a commitment away from him at the, at the very last minute so they've had some tough breaks there for sure i mean brian allen with the the waiver uh he got to be able to go to iowa because iowa's one of their recruiting staffers was his high school coach. And one of the reasons he picked Illinois was he wasn't able to go to Iowa. Well, a couple months later, he was able to go to Iowa. So that ended up being the, the bad break for Illinois there. But yeah, I mean, Terrence Jameson and that staff got to do better. They got to find a way to close uh, on some of these defensive linemen. It's why, you know, if you can get Harkless on campus, man, you got to make the most of it. Um, and, and if he's, He's told me last week he's still visiting Illinois. I think that's a good sign for Illinois. He's also going to visit Louisville. So maybe some of these other huge schools aren't, aren't going to get him on, but you got to take advantage of that. I, I think momentum is huge this month, Joey. Um, Mason Murrigan out of Michigan is visiting this month. Uh, so to close on him would be a good start. But you just you got to have some really good players here, some talent to develop because – if Keith Randolph or Johnny Newton goes to the pros after this year and you're going to lose Calvin Avery and you're going to lose uh, some other players on the defensive line, like what's your defensive line going to look like in 2024? That's what we're talking about here. It's not about 22 and maybe not even 23. It's about what's your defensive line look like in two or three years. You look at the scholarship chart and it's, there's not a lot of underclassmen here. No, and you're kind of buoyed a little, or saved a little bit by the fact that T. Rye Edwards still has, is it three years, Jeremy? Am I, am I remembering four years of eligibility left like that? 
imagine if that wasn't the case, you know? I mean, that, and we don't know how good he's going to be, but he's there. I mean, <laughs> Yeah, and I, I don't mean to knock him. We just haven't seen at the, the consistent, you know, we just haven't seen it. It'll be a big year for him to be able to show what he can do. But yeah, man, you're exactly right. And you hope this isn't a problem for 2023 if you're Illinois. I mean, the good news is if it's a problem, you got two young men paid in the NFL. Um, and that's very good news. And it's, it's going to help recruiting, but you would think. But yeah, on the field, if it's a problem in 2023, they're going to have to go Portland, you would think. And, and they're probably going to have to anyway, just as, as defensive linemen, similar to offensive linemen, take a little time to ready themselves for this because the Big Ten is exactly – there's a reason it's discussed as it is, as this big, you know, run, power, trench league, and it's not ideal for freshmen all the time. Yeah, uh, that's the good part, too, is you can always go Portland. <laughs> like, nowadays, you, you can find a way. It's like – you know, sometimes doing these depth charts and thinking, oh, what's their defensive line rotation going to be in 24 and 25? It's like, well, why are you we even doing that, right? Like, we don't know who's going to be in the court and who's not. Speaking of, it's kind of the same way with quarterback, right? You want to add a high school kid every year, I think, to develop, uh, to add depth, uh, to learn your system and grow in your system. But that's the other concern I got is who's going to be the guy. I, I love the Hank Brown offer, but it certainly seems like, he and Trent Dilfer uh, are, are going to angle for some some other offers. He's from uh, Wheaton, but does he want to come home when he's going to have some other offers? Like Liberty is very involved there, um, and I'm not sure how involved Illinois is. So Illinois is going to add a transfer next year, I think, for sure, because uh, DeVito will be gone. Sikowski will have another year. And then you're with Samari Collier, Donovan Leary. Uh, obviously, your walk-on. Uh, Michaud will be there as well. And I think he's got a chance to, to find a role here, but um, that's another position. I, I don't know. I, I don't, it's very, who's going to be the guy. Are they going to get a guy or are they just going to rely on the portal? I'm not sure. That's probably the biggest question, right? And I know we just went on and on about the defensive line, but the quarterback's the quarterback. And that's probably the biggest question is how does this shake out? And it's, problem you know if all if things go as well as they hope they do obviously right you didn't recruit donovan leary to be a back, career backup or, or whatever the case may be if things go as well as you hope and perhaps this isn't you know quite the issue that the defensive line is but you do jeremy you want to get guys every single year one guy every year seems to make a lot of sense and i'm sure brett bielma had to weigh that calculus when he made a change at offensive coordinator because that put them that just put him behind, put him behind the eight ball and trying to to build out this position. We, we saw Barry Lunny was on the road. Uh, we saw offers come in from the road. I don't know how many of those are going to, you know, what's that's going to ultimately look like if it plays into anything um, for them down the line. But it might be a transfer deal. You know, we'll, we'll see. Maybe there's, there's always a late riser somewhere. Uh, the problem is if you're a late rising quarterback, uh, everyone else kind of tends to know about you too. And that's 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 tough. All right, the good news, Joey, is they have about 30 expected official visitors coming this month and, and two big weekends. The first weekend, uh, we'll have more complete lists uh, on the site later this week, uh, but we know the first weekend is going to be big with some of their top priorities. And, and I think the two we talked about already, um, Malik Elsey's definitely taking an official visit. He's, he's talked about that. Uh, Jair Hill is a possibility as well. To me, those are the most two most important guys this month. Uh, can you find a way to come out of this month with one or two of those guys? If you have one, I think you feel great. If you have two, whoa, right? Like that's three top five prospects in the state. I don't know how realistic that is, though, right? With, with those guys' offer lists. I think LZ is really important, though, because the offer list may be not quite as big. And I think you've done a great job. It's just got to find a way to close. And one thing about Illinois right now is you're kind of selling hope at wide receiver and in the passing game, right? So that, that's the one thing. But the relationships with George McDonald, I think Nate McNeil has done a really good job here. So far, we've only heard of two official visits, Illinois and Cincinnati. And I know what Cincinnati did last year. I know what that passing game has done. I know they're going to the Big 12. That's one you want to win if it's a head-to-head -head battle. But Tennessee, Oregon, some other big-time programs are, are in here. But there's urgency with Malik Elsey, um, getting him, uh, and getting him now, I think is, is pretty important. 
Yeah, and, and you are selling hope. But if you're looking at Malik Elzey, you can also sell like, come on in. We will not waste a lot of time getting you the opportunity to put up numbers in college football and, so, and get yourself some tape because everyone wants to go to the next level. So get yourself some tape for the next level. You can sell a path to pretty darn fast playing time, right? I mean, that that is probably your most attra- one of your more attractive p- pitches to this kid. And and Barry Lonnie sure better fire up some tape. Of, of, I mean, he's, he's got a nice little wide receiver history uh, in the time he was at UTSA. And hopefully, if you're Illinois, Did you show this Kari Franklin him. film from UTSA against Illinois, right? Yeah, man. It's, but yeah, that, that's a big one, Jeremy, because it's, that's a position that still needs answered uh, in, in a lot of ways behind Isaiah Williams and long term. I mean, Casey Washington has been good. And I, I like what they did in the 22 class with Sean Miller, who I think is going to play as a freshman. Uh, and, I, and I think he's he's probably going to play a pretty fair amount um, there. And then you get Hank Beatty, who you and I both believe is, is pretty college polished uh, for a chance to go in and do something. Uh, and then some of the other guys, Ian Pugh, Ash and Hollins are a little longer term. Malik Elzey, man, he can... Come on in, buddy. It's it's time. And, you know, if you're trying to pitch that, that's a big one, Jeremy, because that's that's also, you know, we talked earlier about buzz and generating that. That'll do it, man. That'll do it. And that'll really carry some momentum uh, for an Illinois program to come out of that for not, not, not to say he's going to commit the first week. That's not fair. But to come out of, of this month of June, if you can come back with him, all right. You know, you're that's a couple four stars now. It's like, oh shoot, what you'll find somebody somewhere is going like, wait, shoot, what the heck? What's going on there? And, and that's kind of what you want. Yeah. And I know there's actually been studies of every time a kid goes on another official visit after yours, like the chance of you landing them goes down 25%. So that's why there's some urgency. But Illinois was able to land Aiden Lawfrey, Sean Miller, some other guys last year, uh, even though they took some, uh, some other official visits. Sometimes they just want to compare, like EMP. Uh, did that as well. So um, I think that's a big one. Jire Hill is a big one too. Can you close that one before anyone else has a chance? Um, Because you've done everything at this point. It's just now you got to close for for guys like that. I think two other ones that are important, Joey, more maybe more foundational, not headline grabbing. Uh, Pat Farrell, I I think it's time, right? A three-star kid out of St. Rita that Illinois has done a great job with. They're the only Power 5 offer. Um, it's the only official visit he has planned and he's visiting this next weekend. I think it's time for Illinois to close. And I, I would imagine it's time for Pat Farrell. Like if you want Illinois, you might want to act now because otherwise they might have to, to look elsewhere. And then Brandon Henderson, offensive lineman at East St. Louis, uh, hasn't played a lot of high school football, but boy, six, five, 300 pounds moves extremely well. Uh, just a really high ceiling, probably a guy that's going to take time to develop, but they could probably close their offensive line class if they're able to get Brandon Henderson to hop on board. You are going against Iowa State. And, and you know, Matt Campbell's former O-line coach, Tom Manning, their offense coordinator, is a really good O-line coach. Uh, so you're going head-to-head against them. But, you know, he visited here a couple times in the spring. I think those are two that I look at and say, you should land those guys. Like, Illinois, you're in position to land those guys. I think it's going to be important to get them on board. Yeah, I agree with that. And in the case of Brandon Henderson, That'd be two East St. Louis guys in this class. And that's obviously a program you want to have a pretty good relationship with. And need needs feels like a super strong word, but pretty close to it. You you, you need to be able to to know that East St. Louis is, is a recruitable place and, and a winnable place more than anything. So that, that that would be big on that front as well. But yeah, they could, they could shut where here we are. We're, we're talking about this on our offensive line commitment day and, if all goes well, if you're Illinois, you hope to shut this thing down by like June, or unless uh, you found a find a Mountis Moeller type guy who, who you just don't want to pass on. Uh, but yeah, they could check box uh, a position group off, and I think that I would probably feel pretty good if you're Illinois. Yeah, and obviously they got other guys that are scheduled to visit here. I, I think the next weekend they're hosting a lot of officials is that June 17th through the 19th. And it's basically their Florida weekend. There are other prospects that are visiting that weekend. Mason uh, Murrigan out of Michigan is one of those guys. Um, Chris Tarek, 
Uh, if he doesn't commit to anywhere else before then, is is scheduled to visit Illinois that weekend. But they have a bunch of Florida DBs. The Ducona brothers, Jason and J- Jonas, who are actually uh, about 350 days apart, uh, but they're in the same class. Zachary Tobe, Jaheim Clark, I think they're sitting rel- really well with. There's, there could be some others, Joey. Uh, that's going to be Aaron Henry's week uh, and Ryan Walter's week to do work. And all these guys are really good prospects. And uh, I think they've done a pretty good job of, of evaluating guys and, and landing guys out of Florida. Yeah, I think you have two two guys who, Jeremy, you and I would consider very strong recruiters um, in Aaron Henry and Ryan Walters. They seem to be guys who can – who can close things down, get the job. I know there's been some misses. Damon Walters, obviously, just to to Northwestern recently. But you have two guys who, who are strong recruiters in this period, and they're both pretty well connected in the state of Florida. So that, that feels like a nice little storm if you're Illinois to have two two guys who are good coaches, good recruiters, and both kind of circle the same general area down there in that state. And, and they've got to be honest, man, that's that's a pretty that's turning into a pretty nice sell for Illinois to come play the defensive back uh, in this, and at least it looked so after the first year with Kirby Joseph. And you, we think there's going to Quan Martin and Sidney Brown are, are probably in line for nice years, and they might be able to make some noise for themselves as well. That's a, that pitch is coming along. Devin Witherspoon would be in the same uh, situation there, so that's that could be a big weekend to, as you start to like check off position boxes might be able to do some work and uh, on June 17th weekend. Yeah, Joey. So just to reset, I, this is a class. We probably should have said this early. There's not going to be a 24 person prep class, right? You have 14 seniors that I have on my scholarship chart that, you know, are going to move on. You probably have some fifth year juniors that are some, all those guys are going to come back. I think there's nine of them uh, probably not all going to come back. So maybe at the end of the day, this could be a 20 person class when you add transfers and all that. But I, I know Brett Bioma told you 12 to 15 in this class. I think, I think 15 is probably right. I, I, I think 12 would probably be pretty low. And the way I look at that, you'd love to add a quarterback. You don't know if they will. You want to add a couple wide receivers. They're really not in on tight ends, but they added three last year. So you feel fine about that position. Um, you know, defensive lines, huge need. I think they need at least two, but maybe three. Um, but I feel good about where they're at with DBs. Uh, they added a linebacker. I think, you know, Farrell, if you can get him on board, you feel good about the edge. D line and quarterback are my main ones. I, otherwise, I feel pretty good about where they are. Uh, we'll see what happens with wide receiver because if, if you don't land LZ or, or Frederick Moore, uh, who's, who's a top recruit as well then maybe those, that position becomes more of a concern. Yeah, I'm with you there. D-line and quarterback. I, wide receiver, there's still a pretty high ceiling out there for Illinois in the 2023 class. Then you'll have to see which direction they go, how they go about that. Uh, if for some reason one or two or you know however that works, don't pan out and, and end up elsewhere. But there's still a lot, lot there. But yeah, man, I – Offensive line was something that I think a year ago at this time, Jeremy, I know they had Joey Oakla and Hunter Whitenick. I believe Clayton Leonard. Yeah, Clayton Leonard was on board to this point. But even, well, let's say 14, 15 months ago, right? You know, soon after the staff got hired, you thought, shoot, that is like position need 1A, 1, 2, and 3. I mean, you had to, to fortify that. They did running back. I mean, come on, this is a Brett Bielma system. That's probably going to recruit. You, you won. You won a big one with Fagan. And that, that's a – Josh McCray looks like a, an emerging, you know, all Big Ten type of player in, in some capacity. So those two things look pretty good for Illinois, but you got to get the defensive line. Getting Harkless on campus uh, as he, he still intends to visit, dude, that's a big deal. I mean, that's just a – how's it going to work? I don't know, but you're still in the running. And that's that's where you need to be going into this big swoon of official visits. So, Joey, let's let's end the podcast with this. They have four commitments right now. If the number they want to get to, we'll go with 15. OK, whether it's 14, 15, 13, 16. We should say 15 prep prospects. I think yes. that's important to say in this era. Yeah, good call. So 15 prep prospects. What number do you think they should get to? Like that would be a good goal that 
if Illinois fans in a month hear this, that we say, hey, this is a good number. If they're at this number, you feel pretty good going into the fall. Um, nah, 10? 10, is that? You went right. You and I are on the same page. My number was 10 originally. If they have nine and you have like LZ as part of that, I feel pretty good about it, right? Like, or if you had Jair Hill as part of that. But I, I think I think 10 going into training camp, would be about where you want to be um, because if, if you land an LZ and you get a couple DBs, you, you close on Henderson and Farrell, right? You get a defensive lineman, right? I, I think that would be a goal is to get two DBs, a defensive lineman, wrap up your old line class, get one of the stars, LZ or Hill, um, and, and wrap up with, you know, some of those guys you talked about, the in-state guys. So I, I think, you know, landing six this month, I think that's realistic. And I think that should be about, the expectation. Yeah. And that gives you still some room in the fall to find some people that are even in the state, Jeremy, like it happens where somebody puts a senior year together that you're like, Oh shoot, where this is of note. This is, this is something we need to monitor. And it gives you a little more time. There's going to be guys who want to drag this out too, who, who want to go through and, and get in some, everyone's different, obviously, but it's still 10 would really, I mean, that feels just like you, you could, you built momentum too, right? If you have 10, you got six in a month and that's some, that is some momentum. And especially if one, you feel like maybe they're sitting okay with a couple guys or two, it's one or both of the stars, like the mega stars. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to mention here is there's always these satellite camps. We didn't mention this yet that they, they go to these mega camps or sure. Florida. They host or, them. Yeah. Or St. Louis and they get, they host the, on campus camps, which aren't as big of a deal. You usually don't get as many big time prospects for those, but you always get some guy that emerges Ashton Hollins, right? They kept that one under wraps. Yeah. Seth Coleman, a couple of years ago, we're able to find him. Like you always get someone who emerges kind of in this June that maybe by the end of the month, we're talking about Illinois landed and we didn't even know his name quite yet. One one of the guys that, you know, Illinois could potentially land is this Terraman lot. If they don't add another wide receiver, this kid out of Florida, you know, they offered with, with blazing speed. That could be a guy that they push for uh, by the end of the month. He's got an official for, for late in the month. So that's what's fun about this month. It's chaotic. There's a lot of pressure to it um, for, for both sides of this thing, uh, but it is definitely an exciting month and the month in college football recruiting. Yeah, it's huge. And I, I did ask, and I'll have something for this tomorrow. Uh, we're recording this on Monday, obviously. I think that's been pretty clear. But I'll have something for this tomorrow, Jeremy, about, and I know you talked with Pat Embleton about it, but Brett Bielma, you know, the stuff they learned from last year in terms of how to, this month of official visits and how how to stagger it, how to, you know, make sure you pull it off in, in the ways that that are the most, that, that resonate the most with the kids on campus. And you could steal stuff from what you've seen a year ago. With what, if if you get feedback from a prospect, or if you see on social media, like, okay, X school did this. Hey, we like that idea. Well, guess what, man? Somebody might steal this paintballing idea that Illinois rolled out last year. Like, that's just how this thing works. There, there's not there's a finite number of things, and you're going to see people pluck from here and there. And I, I'm just interested in how second year of like maybe, and not that we heard it went like it was like unorganized or anything like that actually we heard the opposite last year but i just think you get better doing it again and evaluating what didn't didn't work do you think paint bowling survived the cut i'm I, I, I need to that's like my number one goal this week now is to figure out his paint bowling on the docket dude i heard i think it sounds like people liked it and also i remember hearing about uh like matt fry's I think Bart talked about it when he, when Matt Fry signed his letter of intent. He's like, dude, this guy was out there. He was like a big offensive lineman, right? Like those are things like kind of a weird thing to learn or something that you're obviously intending to be fun, but. Are you evaluating offensive linemen while they barrel roll in a paintball match or something? <laughs> hey man, if you watch them, uh, sure do it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I just, I, I'm, I'm fascinated to know what that block of time is. If not paintballing, what is it? What, what would, Two things that you think would be, if you have, well, let's say, 15 kids on campus, what, whatever the case may be, two things that you think would fit in that block of time that you would do. Well, I can think of things I'd want to do on a college visit. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, 
They probably do with their fellow players. Obviously, some sort of like team bonding, whatever you know, whatever the case may be. Oh, you know, laser tag sounds awesome. Did we just become best friends? Because for two of my birthdays in college, uh, we went laser tagging at Skateland and Champagne. That that that'd be my go-to. The paintball, it's hot outside. Whatever. No, man, go play. Go play. Uh laser tag with a bunch of like 12 year olds in there <laughs> i'm barrel rolling all of that no yeah that that would be that'd be my number one laser tag that's the number laser. one you gotta find a place for it though that's where i feel like yeah. well, well, you can just get vests right you can just like it's not like you can just do dude hear me out laser tag at the smith center that place is enormous you've got the roof yeah but you gotta like lights out right right and you could do so much lighting stuff you could have like smoke in there your only issue is probably be concerned about um you know some lawsuits if somebody gets hurt or somebody yeah hurt. that'd be a tough one i mean how different is that than paintball though somebody's somebody's like under the cold tub and pops their head out and <laughs> snipes somebody <laughs> Dude, that would be I would like for any royalties if somehow that happens. Just let's just put that on the table yeah. now. But laser tag would be sweet. I'm fat. Dang, dang it, dude. Now that's like, hey, how'd the visit go? What by the way, what did you guys do? I have to know. Was it paintball? What'd you do? Yeah, yeah, we'll definitely be doing that. Yeah, I would, it would be, it'd be laser tag for me. Is there any other like childhood game you'd want on there? Like capture the flag or something like that? Could they make like an aggro crag <laughs> and do gut style stuff? What's wrong with you? <laughs> oh, like the show. Show guts. What'd you think I was doing? I don't know. Dude, like, like a Legends of the Hidden Temple type thing would be That's right. awesome. I mean, dude, here's the thing too. They have like that Papa Shot down there. I could enter, I just two days ago entertained myself on Papa Shot for like 45 minutes. I, got I didn't even have. Bowling alley. You got a big movie theater in there, right? Do whatever the heck you Laser want. tag. Laser tag. Big 10 football recruiting in 2022. They got some, <laughs> they got a big budget here. All right. Uh, you can send yours in. Comment on the YouTube page. Tweet at us uh, if you got some ideas of what you'd want to do on your official visit. Uh, we, we know what a lot of people want to do uh, on official visits, but this has got to be the PG 13 stuff that the coaching staff, uh, can do. So, uh, you can send those our way. Do we miss anything? I think we covered every angle here, Joey. Not a big month, Jeremy. It, it, it's a really important month because we've seen this month matter to them. You know, like th- this is a month that they know they can either, they, they can really solidify their class in the month of June and, and we'll see, we'll see how that shakes out. I Good like stuff. the plan. I like the plan. It's the same thing. I, I really like getting, I know I'm still babbling here, but get the recruits, the, the committed kids around there. Like, I, I really think that they they liked how that turned out last year. I think it's a smart plan. I think there's no question. The organization, the plan, it all makes sense. Sometimes previous staffs didn't make sense. The guys you got coming on campus are guys you want to get on campus and guys Illinois has maybe struggled to get on campus for official visits in the past, right? All that's encouraging. Now it's about closing. It just becomes recruiting, right? It's win recruiting battles. And sometimes that can be tough. You're not going to land all of them, but the staff is starting to win a couple more in state than they, they previously did. That's for, for dang sure. All right. For Joey Wagner, I'm Jeremy Warner. Everybody have a great end to the rest of your Memorial day weekend. Have a great start to the week. And of course we will have so much I know Illinois football recruiting Derek Piper, Papa Piper gets away for a weekend, gets on the trail. He's got plenty in the basketball content coming up as well. And we will do more on the podcast with basketball as well as we start to see these rosters in the big 10 settle in and man, it's a jumbled mess at the top of the big 10, in my opinion. So we'll talk about that later in the week. Thank you for listening to the Illini Choir podcast. Give us a like rating review, wherever you get your podcast, follow us on YouTube as well. Subscribe to us, hit the notifications bell, all of that. It certainly helps us out. Everybody have a great day. And we'll talk to you next time right here on the Illini Choir podcast.